In this video, I'm going to explain what positively invariant means and also talk about how we can apply the Ben Dixon theorem for this system. So, what we have here is H, which is essentially an ellipse. That's what it is, it's a region of, of ellipses. So, I'll just draw quickly what that's going to look like. It's going to be something like this. You have an inner ellipse and an outer ellipse. And this is, kind of, this is kind of your region. That's what H is going to be. So what it's asking you to investigate is, are there any periodic orbits in there? And is it positively invariant? So we have to first understand what positively invariant means. It's really pretty simple. Uh, look here. Look at this one. These are some, some things that have to be true for Ben Dixon. But the second one is, H is positive invariant, and I have Hotel California written. And if you know anything about Hotel California, it's that you can enter any time you like, but you can never leave, right? So that's what positive invariant means for a region like H. Uh, if you have something, you know, it, it's cruising up and it goes in, uh, maybe it didn't realize it, but it, it can't come back out. That's what positively invariant means. You know, maybe you'll have some type of periodic orbit in there. Um, or not periodic, maybe it just approaches something asymptotically. And this also has to be true from the inside. Okay, if you have some trajectory, then it has to go in there and uh, it can never leave. So what you want to, to do to prove that's true is basically you're kind of going to take a, a derivative and show that solutions are going this way right, when you're on the outside and that when you're on the inside, they're going this way. So if you can show that, then you can show that it has to be positively invariant because these things are not going to go upstream. And this H you can think of as maybe Hotel California because we want to prove that you can't get out of there. So how are we going to do this? The professor recommended a uh, Lyapunov function and what, which, what would be suitable for this one? Well, it was a test, so it's actually, it's just this. Uh, your h right here. 1 fourth x squared plus 3y squared. So we're going to take a partial derivative of that. Or not a partial derivative. There will be partial derivatives in it. We're going to take the derivative of it. So let's write that out in the next page. And we'll say, how about v of xy equals... 1 fourth x squared plus uh, 3y squared. So to take this, you just do the partial derivative with respect to x. So that's just going to be uh, x over 2 times dx dt, which is like x dot here, um, minus xy squared. So Put that there, minus xy squared, and plus the partial derivative with respect to y, which is just 6y, times dy dt, which is minus y cubed plus 3y. Okay, and now I'm going to skip over a few steps here. It's just algebra. But if you expand that and do a little bit of factoring, you're going to get something that looks like this which is really nice because if you look in here, what is this? That's just h, right? So now we can use this function to investigate what's happening with the system. So how about at 8? Imagine if all of that was equal to 8, right? That would be kind of like at the sort of the inside of your ellipse somewhere, okay? And if that whole thing, because, you know, in H it says 8 less than or equal to all that stuff. So we could pick something smaller than 8 if we wanted to. But why not just say it's equal to 8, okay? Then 8 minus 9 is negative 1 times something on the outside that's negative. So negative times negative is positive. That means it's increasing outward from the origin. So we're happy with that. And then let me just draw the, the other, other boundary. 
And by the way, it's, it's not that hard to actually draw this accurately and, and figure out uh, what the major and minor axis of each ellipse are, but I, that's kind of simple. Um, this is a, a high-level course, so I hope you can all do that. Now, how about for the outside? Well, why don't we just pick some? Let pick uh, 13, because that's the, the outer boundary, right? If that whole thing is equal to 13, then 13 minus 9 is a positive times the outside, which is always negative, so you get things that are decreasing. So from that, we know that it is positively invariant. Anything that goes in there is not coming back out. That's all that positively invariant means. And that doesn't mean there's a periodic orbit in there. It just means it can't come back out, because it might just go in and hit a stationary point. So what happens in this one? Um, and the professor gave us a few, or I guess he's an adjunct, we'll call him the professor though. He gave us a few things that have to be true to use Ben Dixon's theorem. Uh, it has to be closed and bounded, which I think is fine for this one. We have ellipses, right? Uh, positive invariant, we just showed that. You know, those trajectories going in are not going to come out. And a third one, H contains no stationary points. So we just have to investigate, does this thing contain any stationary points? Because if, if it does, then you can't use Ben Dixon. So if we go back to our system of equations here, this x dot and y dot, this thing has a lot of stationary points. So basically, if you just do a simple analysis here, if y is 0, um, what could x be to make this also a stationary point? Well, anything, anything that's on the x-axis, right? Because this x dot here is um, negative x times y squared. So if y is zero, then everywhere you have, um, I don't know. So I'm just, I'm just going to put an, an r in here. Uh, anything for x, and then y is zero. So what that means is the whole x-axis is, you know, it's just this infinite locus of stationary points. So if we go back to this sketch. You have stationary points, and you have a lot of stationary points, right? They're just going along this x-axis. It's, you know, it's really the whole thing. It's the continuous x-axis. So you can't use Ben Dixon because there are stationary points in there. There are a lot. And what would happen, say you were here. I don't know exactly what the system does. Uh, you didn't have to draw the field for this problem. Um, but maybe it has something that was kind of periodic, and it was having a good time, but then it's just going to get stuck. Okay, or if you start here, it's going to go up. It's going to get stuck. So, I mean, immediately you know that for this one, uh, there are no periodic orbits. Uh, and the Ben Nixon criterion, what they do is they essentially tell you that there isn't a periodic orbit if they're satisfied. Um, and if they're not, it says there, there sort of might be a periodic orbit. So, I'll have a quick look back, but I think that's just about it for this problem. Uh, no, the Ben Dixon does not work for proving the existence of a periodic orbit because uh, there's a stationary point, and yeah, we proved that it was positively invariant. So I think if you did that, you would have gotten full credit for the question. Uh, probably a little bit less. He's a tough grader. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or corrections, please add them in the comments. And thank you for watching.